Hello and welcome back to Speed Demon Painting. In today's video we will talk about what happens to a box of models that you leave alone for just a split second with your new young puppy. Luckily the second part of the video is all about what you can find inside the box and what type of models you can build with it, so let's maybe focus on that for this video. We are of course talking about the Kondika Battle Fleet set which was sent to me by War Cradle Studios for review. Now the Kondika is a large aerial flagship for the Russian Commonwealth and so naturally it comes included with a large sea base but also two of the regular medium sized sea bases because you can build the cruiser squadrons in there as well that uh, come on the advanced sprue if I'm not mistaken. Uh, one of the sprues was cut in half as you can see here and then the, uh, the second sprue was left intact. Um, I think they had to do that just to make sure that everything fit inside of the size of this particular box which is uh, yeah, the other the classic Battle Fleet's box size. Now the star of the show is of course the big resin flagship so the baggie with all the resin parts is quite big and uh, the first part I'm pulling out is the front end of the actual Kondika flagship. Uh, a rather large sprue gate I have to say. Clipping it off and cleaning it off will uh, be slightly more difficult but if you've got a nice sharp pair of clippers that should Similarly, the main hull also has a rather large sprue gate on it. Uh, you will have to slice this off and then get a nice sharp hobby knife to clean everything off. Now these are one part molds that, uh, uh, no, sorry, two part molds I should say, that come together. So you will have to trace down the seam line, the, the mold line on it. Um, but uh, that wasn't all too difficult I found during assembly. Uh, the mold line sort of runs across this uh, middle section that still has an other part that should slide over it and so it was fairly easy to remove. The bridge as well just sits on top of the hull like this, which is very easy to clean up. Um, all you had to do really was slice off the parts from the side. You do have these two sprue gates that run in between uh, the sort of the back wings, I, sh uh, I should say, and uh, the one part, the big generator in the center. So uh, yeah, easy enough to slice off and to remove. And then just uh, you know, find the mold line, as you can see, running here. It's very subtle, but you do want to remove it to make sure that your uh, parts have a neat and uh, flush glue contact point. Now, apart from the main hull, we have all the little interchangeable parts. Um, the ones here, this front piece, is one that take bo takes both the big cannon and uh, the plastic sky drill for one of the alternate builds as well. And then you've got these, which is the ablative armor, which is used on the Kondika itself, that just slides into those side holes. Now, those side holes will hold some other parts as well for variants, um, and you can magnetize them, but you will need to be incredibly careful to magnetize these small parts. I usually go and uh, magnetize things by removing the pegs altogether and uh, these are rather thin parts so installing a magnet into them is going to be tricky. You're going to be, have to be very disciplined with your, uh, with your pin vise to not drill straight through them. And the next parts are these uh, big generators which I assume keep the whole thing afloat and uh, yeah they're also fairly easy to, uh, to clip off and to install. The lucky thing is the sprue gates are attached to the underside of these parts so uh, you know, that makes it extra easy to remove. Then we've got these uh, furnace cascades I believe they are called which go in as uh, the alternate build option for uh, one of the main ships and then you also have these exhaust pipes that have wings on them which will be glued at uh, the tail end uh, in those small pegs, uh, well holes I should say, right at the back there. And then in this box there was also something that I have never quite seen before, which is uh, plastic generators that were clipped out, presumably one of the staff at the factory, uh, and they weren't put on resin sprues. What was put on a resin sprue are five of these uh, gun batteries. Now I think that was uh, a bit odd because I believe that you only have three weapon hard points as is with these uh, ships, so I'm not quite sure why the second two parts weren't just the uh, shield generator and magnetic generator that came along with it, but that might have been just a, a little mix-up from uh, this, the model design studio. Next up we have the advanced sprues from, uh, well that we've seen before for the Russians, uh, the big uh, thing on the middle there is the, the hovercraft which can be built as uh, quite a few different versions, uh, for instance you can make a Guyana shockwave hovercraft but you can also build it as a yak depending on what type of bridge you put on the top of it and if you mix it up with a couple of other elements such as the sprue containing the boyars you can make even more hovercraft such as the Zuber which is quite a phenomenal bit of kit. 
Now in terms of the flyers, you can make uh, one of three options for the cruisers. The first one being the Irkutsk Sky Cruiser, which has this large drill on the front bit. Or you can uh, also build it as a Saransk or a Tunguska class. Uh, the Saransk, I believe, is the one that has the Katusha rocket systems. While the uh, Tunguska is sort of like a flying Kutsov, if you will, that has uh, two heavy hardpoint slots for, uh, for it to do its, uh, its business. There's one thing you have to keep in mind though, if you want to build uh, the Krasnaya class of the main battleship, the one that has the drill in front of it, you will not be able to build of course to Irkutsk sky cruisers, or if you're going the route of magnetization on your main flagship, uh, building to Irkutsk is uh, impossible, but uh, no, that's not the biggest deal because uh, I do believe they come in squadrons of three, so just buying an extra squad of aerials or advanced squadrons uh, should see you having a max unit unit of those, so that's not too much of a problem, I assume. You also get an escort token on this sprue, so that, uh, yeah, you have these small tokens, well, two of them, actually. Uh, you have these small tokens that uh, accompany some of your units and give them a bit of extra firepower in assaults or in uh, point-blank shooting, but also help them out with defense, so it's always nice to have a couple of them. Now I'll be building or painting them with this uh, traditional uh, green and black color scheme that I had before. Uh, these are some of the hovercraft that I mentioned. Uh, this particular build is a Yak that has two rocket batteries on it. And as you can see, I've magnetized them um, for uh, yeah, for easy swapping as well. Um, now I have built these small escort tokens as well. These are them very cute little models. And uh, a little tip, if you want to uh, magnetize them, just put a little ball of uh, milliput at the bottom and a magnet there and you can easily transport them in a steel carry case. Now, I still haven't gotten around to actually painting these models. I've got two of these uh, Sarang class cruisers, and uh, yeah, I think I'll be uh, assembling my model as the Krasnaya class for the main flagships, because I do love how they have uh, a similar build with those uh, furnace cascades on them, and uh, as you can see, it's a quite hefty model. I never really liked the... Uh, the, the Irkutsk, if I'm honest, I thought the drill was a bit too large compared to the rest of the model, but uh, that problem is pretty much gone when I look at the Krasnaya as well. It's a lot better um, proportioned, if you will. So I will be building this one. Um, I will not be magnetizing this whole set. I'll, uh, I'll yeah, basically get a second set, really, if I wanted uh, the other two build versions. Now, one thing I did discover in terms of magnetization is that this part that uh, drops off right now is uh, going to have to be magnetized separately because uh, it is not needed to make the Kondika class, but it is needed to make the two other ones, the Konostoga or the Krasnaya. So um, you're going to have to be a bit creative when magnetizing these things. Now, it's not impossible, but you are going to have to find a way to actually fix uh, the sky drill onto it because that is a hollow bit of kit if you glue the three plastic parts together So magnetization is not for the faint of heart, but definitely not impossible I also had a small issue with that particular part because the bottom of it wasn't a clean cast There was a bit of a shift in between the two parts of the mold But uh, it's uh, barely visible and I was able to do with a lot of effort clean it up as well So it's not like I'm getting a resend of this one now in the end, like I said, I opted for this build, so I just uh, super glued the plastic part in front of it. And this is pretty much what it ends up looking like. I will have to put magnets into the hard point slots. And uh, yeah, in terms of size, it is a pretty chunky ship because uh, this is it compared to a Borodino and uh, yeah, definitely lives up to its mastery name. Now I'm not quite sure what I should do for the next video. Uh, do you want to have a step-by-step -step paint guide of how I achieve uh, the look of my uh, Commonwealth fleet? Um, you can vote for that in the comment section. Or would you rather have a Tactica video to see what has changed in the new Orbat for the Commonwealth and what you can make out of these? Let me know in the comments and I'll uh, see that I get around to making those videos. Now in any case, this was it for this uh, unboxing of the, the Kondika battle fleet set. I hope you liked it and make sure you hit the thumbs up if you liked it and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, bye!